Hello. Within MTSS, there are times when students' assessment must go deeper than our traditional universal screening systems and progress monitoring assessments. The purpose of going deeper is to answer the question why a student is not responding to the current instruction, or for advanced learners, what else may be needed to extend their learning. This level of student assessment can be characterized as a diagnostic process. So first, why? Diagnostic processes are used to determine the instructional focus. Diagnostic processes can include both formal and informal diagnostic assessments. The term diagnostic process incorporates both types of these assessments and conveys the idea that drilling down to teach more precisely often requires various types of information gathering and discrete assessments. The ultimate aim of diagnostic processes are to answer the following questions. What specific skills does the student need? Why has previous instruction or intervention been inadequate for this student? And how can future instruction best meet their needs? Although implementation of a highly effective, robust standard treatment protocol for supplemental intervention is designed to meet the needs of the majority of students that require more than core, there will be students whose needs are so great and or their response to supplemental is inadequate to accelerate progress enough. These students may require more individualization, customization, and intensification of instruction. This typically requires a deeper diagnostic process to meet their needs. In addition, a diagnostic process is not confined to students requiring intensive interventions. Teams may decide that some students require a supplemental intervention may also need a diagnostic process in order to adequately customize their support and accelerate progress. So what is a diagnostic process? With this in mind, let's look at some examples of formal and informal diagnostic assessments that may be used in a diagnostic process. First, informal diagnostic assessments could be examinations of student work and test through procedures such as error analysis. Why students have given incorrect answers on past assessments can give a vivid picture of patterns of misconception and weakness that can be the focus of instruction. Another informal diagnostic assessment is a student interview during or after they have completed a learning task or assessment. Interviewing students about why they chose a certain strategy or their thinking behind solving problems in the area of math is a very effective way to design and deliver appropriate intervention for students. Informally, presenting tasks required at lower levels of content is another way to conduct informal diagnostic assessment. For example, in the area of math, we can look at the learning progressions to determine if the student has the underlying skills to perform the major tasks of the grade. Informal diagnostic assessments can also include observations, both structured and unstructured, of students during various activities and instructional settings. These can be used when students have either academic or behavioral difficulties that may be in need of more intense instruction. Educators can use structured observations such as off-task, on-task analysis, event recording, which is just the number of times a target behavior occurs, or latency recording, which is how long it takes a student to begin or complete a task. To determine a focus for behavioral intervention and or how to intensify an academic intervention through a behavioral solution. In addition to informal diagnostic assessments, there are more formal diagnostic assessments that can be incorporated into the diagnostic process for a student. It is important to note here that the purpose of the diagnostic process within an MTSS framework is to determine what will enable learning. This is in stark contrast to processes that have been used in the past to move students through tiered processes to obtain a label as the only end goal. The processes we are talking about are used to plan instruction that will accelerate progress for that student. Some examples of formal diagnostic assessments are typically assessments that have a more standardized administration and may require the individual giving the assessment have more specialized training. 
In reading, these may be tests that address phonological processing, decoding skills, vocabulary, and comprehension. In math, these may be tests that look at underlying math concept knowledge, such as things like internalization of the number line and number sense skills. In behavior, this may be a functional behavior assessment. So finally, across most content areas, we can identify underlying skills that may need further investigation for students that appear to need more intense intervention. These areas are presented in the table within the MTSS assessment guidelines on page 7. Depending on the grade level of the student, the team can use these areas strategically as a way to begin a diagnostic process for a student having difficulty in that area. From these areas presented there, teams should ask questions to determine how they can gather more information. From these questions, the team can then determine if they need an informal diagnostic assessment, a formal diagnostic assessment, or both within a diagnostic process.